Oh. Should we do a Friday night run? So, yes, for people that are like, Jesus Christ, Friday Night Rant is back. The reason originally I killed it was because I didn't keep my finger on the pulse of gaming news. And I thought if I then did a Friday Night Rant, it would be um, not a genuine rant. It would just be like, okay, I read this on the news and this is my opinion. It's not my opinion because I don't really care what was in the news because I kind of fell out of gaming news. I just didn't care about it anymore because it just kind of bugged me. Um, so because I wasn't interested in it, I wasn't looking at it, hence why Friday Night Rant died. But because I'm now streaming up to like four times a, a night, sorry, four hours in a night, what's happening is obviously I'm playing computer games and I'm talking to other gamers, which means my finger has now been put back on that pulse again. So even if I'm not seeking the news, people will bring it to me saying, oh, did you know this? And this game's coming out and that. And it's kind of brought up a lot of feelings, a lot of anger. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, let's bring the Friday Night Rant back. So she's back. Let's start with the trial run, shall we? Every two weeks. I will try, Junkie will do his best for every two weeks to do a Friday Night Rant, but I will try my best to do it once a week. That's the Junkie promise. So you say, Mr. Junkie, tell me, who are you angry at? I'll tell you right now. It's Blizzard. Which I know is low hanging fruit at this point. You're like, oh, Blizzard, that's an easy one. Come on, we know what that's about. No, I've got my two cents about this and it's slightly different because I'm going to moan about fucking gamers and not Blizzard themselves. So for anyone that doesn't know them, Blizzard, big old corporation, and they banned Blizzchung and the commentators for one of the actual people came on and he was like, I support Hong Kong. Blizzard was like, I support China because they give me money. Fuck yourself, you're sacked. So banned him for a year and got rid of the commentators. So then obviously there was outroar, people were going, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And then they've started boycotting um, Blizzard. Blizzard's now reduced that sentence from one year to six months. So that boycott is working. Um, but they're still continuing the boycott because they don't, don't want to see it six months. They want it reduced to zero or maybe even something smaller. But nonetheless, the boycott is still going. And what I want to do is talk about boycotts. I did a video not long ago about boycotts. No one saw it because I wasn't happy with it and the audio was shit. But it kind of covers along these things as well. Now, boycotts can be annoying. I think there's a time and place for a boycott. And I think right now is a time to have a boycott. But the point is, some people are like, oh, it's pointless. Who are we angry at? Nah. But it's not the boycott's fault for people going, oh, McDonald's did this, Burger King did this, EA did this. And then we all get our pitchforks for them couple of hours and we put it away and stow it in the pitch book. Pitch book? I don't know what I was talking about. Moving on. Um, so people forget and that's the problem. So the boycotts themselves aren't the issue. It's what happens after. And the problem is our attention span is just fucking tiny at this point. We will forget even why we was angry. And what people don't understand is they're saying, okay, we, we're going to try and change Blizzard and we're going to do... You will never change Blizzard. The guy that owns Blizzard, which is Robert Kotick, he's worth £7 billion. Pounds. Not million, billion. The guy's got some cheese. How do you accumulate that mass of wealth? By stepping on fucking people's necks. By not giving a shit what people think. That's how you get to be a billionaire. There is no way that he's going, oh, so how people are feeling about this product that were released? I hope they're happy. No, they did. that would not even come on the sheet of information. This game has been released. Let's get the stats. Do you think on that stats is going to be anything to do with are they, um, are they happy with the game? Are they coming back to play it more? No, they're looking at the numbers that says millions, 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 microtransactions, this, services, live blitz and bobs that they can put into the game they're looking at the numbers which accumulate to monies they're not looking about interactions with players and are they happy and is this a good experience they don't give a fuck they don't care one bit about you they care about getting your money so if you sit there and you're boycotting them at the moment which like i said good on you do what you can to damage them once you've finished doing what you've set out do not kid yourself and think you've changed blizzard's opinion 
on a certain subject matter. That will never happen. At the moment, you've got you, a bunch of angry gamers refusing to potentially buy a game or play a game or whatever it is, which will affect a bit of their money. Then you've got China that's saying, we've, we've got all these gamers and that's a lot of fucking money for you. So ban these people. We want them to be silenced. And Blizzard's in the middle going, well, we kind of need to make the players happy because they're money, but China's money. Ooh. And then that's why you've got that middle ground of a six month ban at the moment. If the gamers got more vocal and we can push Blizzard a bit more our way and they'll be like, you know what, let's just, uh, let's cancel this ban. Let's, business as usual, people. What will happen is the gamers will be like, yay, we did it. Back to the games. Credit card, whoosh, tsh, constantly paying for it. And that's the problem. Your boycott isn't going to work if you just use it for a blip of the nastiness that a company does. You need to continue to boycott for as long as you can. And I don't think a boycott has to be 100% strong. And by that I mean you haven't got to stop everything. I don't like Google. I don't like Facebook. I try to boycott them as much as I can. I've come off Facebook. I'm no longer a part of that ecosystem. But I'm still kind of in that ecosystem because I use WhatsApp and I use Instagram. Now, I'm trying to reduce them. I'm looking for an alternative app. They don't, well, they do for WhatsApp. But Instagram, there isn't a good alternative for Instagram. So I'm kind of stuck there. And if people turn around and I'm like, oh, Facebook's really bad. You should come off the platform. When you get people turn around and go, ah, you're actually on Instagram. So you're part of Facebook. You're like, yeah. I'm aware of that, dickhead. It's like somebody going, I'm not going to eat meat because I think it's bad for animals. Then you're like, well, actually, by doing that, you end up eating soy and the soy should have been for the animals. So therefore, you're actually harming the fucking animals. Well, it doesn't matter. The point is they're seeing a problem and they're going, right, this is really bad. So I'm going to do what I can, what's humanly possible to reduce that harm. So instead of being 100% perfect, I might be 90% perfect. And then people are like, ah, you've got 10% faults there. Yeah, and you've got 100, you twat. So I'm better off. And that's the same thing with this. Like, if you want to boycott something, as much as you can, stop giving them money. But I know it's quite hard to do that. Take EA, I hate EA, do not like them. And if they produced a good game, and it was a game that I needed, let's just say Dungeon Keeper, a good one, not a mo... Let's not talk about it. No, that's fine. It's gone. It's gone. The anger came and it subsided. Um, if they brought out Dungeon Keeper, I'm buying it. I don't like EA. I don't give them money. But I'm buying Dungeon Keeper. So what I will do is I will buy as little as I can. And then I'll buy that one thing. And then to try and also fuck them a little bit, I won't buy it digitally. I'll buy it physically, second hand. That way they got none of my money. And that's how you need to do it. You haven't got to be black or white. There's these grey areas. So just try and live in there. But don't be, let's boycott it. Boycott over, continue business as usual. Because that's exactly what they want. They know this shit will blow over in a month. You will forget and continue to pay them. If you don't like the way a company acts, you can't change them. Because the people at the top that makes them decisions makes it purely on money. So... By saying, we don't like that you're censoring Hong Kong, will not make them stop censoring Hong Kong. What will happen is if you stop, completely stop giving them money, well, not completely, I've just told you not to do, completely do it, as much as you can, pull away, and then numbers start to drop, they'll be like, fuck, and you will force them, you'll never change their mind, but you'll force them into something, and that's what you need to do. If we would have done this 10 years ago, gaming would have been a better state, we allowed microtransactions to creep, it, creep in. The only time we kind of took a stance is when EA introduced that online pass and we was like, fuck that, and it died, which is great. But we've let too many things in since then because we'll get angry, then we forget, or we go, we beat that. That boycott works. No, boycotts don't just last two weeks. They're, they, they should be a completely different opinion of a company and you just go, right, Amazon are a bit naughty. I don't like them, so I'm going to reduce the amount of Amazon stuff that I buy. That's what I do. I've got an Amazon package coming today. Why? Because I could only find that pack that item on Amazon. But all the other things that I can get outside of Amazon, I've started doing to reduce the amount of money that Amazon takes from me because I don't agree with the company. And I wish more people did that in gaming. It would also give a rise in more fucking second-hand sales, which would be brilliant. 
because there's no better way than damaging a company by buying a second hand game and i'm not saying that should be done for everything respect all the developers if they're good go buy their game digitally or brand new physically do what you can to support the good but when it's the bad just don't forget remember why they pissed you off and when they bring out a new game if you can stop yourself from going oh i need that game and you can wait two weeks pick it up second hand you would have damaged them they wouldn't have got you money so the next thing i want to talk about is well there's a few and they're jotted down piss poorly so we can we can address these next week but one thing i want to talk about is game pass now xbox game pass in my opinion is fantastic I really like that it's not a bullshit here it is streaming service and hopefully there's going to be no latency problems between you and no 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 the game's yours and when you stop paying the game's ours simple and there is a catalogue of 200 games and to be fair there is some bloody decent titles in there and on top of that they've got some random like Blair Witch came out I was ready to buy that and then it was like oh it's free on game pass I was like okay that's just saved me a bob or two and I think it's really worth it. I think it's ten ninety nine for the ultimate version, so you can have it on PC. It includes your gold, it includes your two hundred games, and I think the service is really well priced when you compare it to things like Netflix. You get all these shows on Netflix. I think it's just about right, and it's sitting in that sweet spot. But I think there's a problem that's going to come ahead, and I wanted to talk about that. So you got two issues that I'm worried about regarding this. First of all. You've got the idea of consolidating all these games in one place. That's fantastic. That's how Netflix used to be. But then what happens is everybody goes, I want a piece of that pie. And everyone starts doing it themselves. And originally on a Friday night rant, I think I did say, I like the idea of EA Access. I hope there's going to be a UB one. Well, now there's a UB one. And I was like, I hope there's a Gearbox one. I hope they all make them. And then I can jump between them. And I think that's absolutely great. But I've then realised the one in the middle the one that started it becomes less and less by doing that so with netflix we've seen that they had a massive catalog of movies and then what happened is disney was like i'm taking my shit and i'm going to put it on disney plus and everybody else started taking their stuff out and putting it on their own streaming services which meant netflix got a bit smaller netflix is pretty good when it comes down to stuff like that. And they was like, well, let's go and get a billion dollars and go, bang, make your own TV shows and movies, which they did. And to be fair, don't get me wrong, there's some crap out there, but there's some fucking stellar stuff on there to the point where I think Netflix probably produces higher quality TV than TV. So the point is, they knew this was coming. So they've now created lots and lots of their own Netflix shows and movies to fill that void of everybody taking out their own shit. This is starting to happen with Game Pass. More and more people are going to be having their own streaming services. And what's going to happen is they're going to take their games out of it and the Game Pass will get that little bit smaller. This is now down to Xbox to go, right, we need to throw that billion pound in like Netflix does and pad it out with more of our own games. But as we know, Xbox sucks when it comes down to his exclusives at the moment. I think this generation has been a bit poor, but this last few years has been piss it's been diabolical everything that they've released has just been mediocre and i've not been excited for at all even when crackdown came out i was like yeah crackdown and the good thing is because microsoft's like everything that we make and it's one of our exclusives you get that free so now i'm playing these games and i played crackdown and it was all right it was nothing to shout about it's it's no stellar it's no gears of war or anything like that and I was like, oh, but at the end of the day, I didn't pay for it. And that's the problem. I've got that mindset now going, well, it was free. You know what I mean? Paid, I paid for Gears of War, 40 quid game. I paid for Crackdown, it was free. So, you know what I mean? You pay for what you get. No, I shouldn't be having that mindset. I should be saying, I want you to produce as good as PlayStation does. I don't care if it's free or not. Someone's paying for it because they're not all paying for Game Pass. But the point is, you've got to step it up. And I've spoke about this in the past that where um, Phil Spencer didn't fully have control of the purse strings. So when he was trying to make these studios and inject this money, it was being blocked. Since then, that block's been removed and now he's got a bit more control over the money. We've seen that they've bought more studios, they're working on more IPs. So I think we're going in the right direction. But it's just one of them things. I don't know. I've kind of lost a bit of faith 
in Xbox as a studio for producing that triple A, them, them monster games where you're like, oh my God, I'm going to remember that for the next 20 years of my life. And this has also shined the other issue onto this Game Pass slash Xbox issue that we're having. And it's microtransactions. So, with Game Pass, obviously these games are free. Uh, we, we know that Microsoft is obviously giving some money to the developers, so they're getting a kickback, they're getting some money, but they're not giving you necessarily the DLC. So, the game's free, um, but if you want the DLC, it's there. So, there is a way for them to still crawl back some of that extra money. That's fine, it don't seem too bad. But somebody pointed out not long ago that all the first party exclusives from like Nintendo and PlayStation don't have microtransactions in it. You got things like God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, they may have a DLC, um, but they don't have microtransactions to buy bits and little skins and jumpers and stuff like that. That don't exist. Look at Nintendo, the Mario's and stuff like that. Zelda, yes, it had a piece of DLC, a substantial piece of DLC, but that's it. And and that's when it's done correctly. When you don't remove a part of a game and call it DLC. No, you make a game that's fucking amazing. And then you go, did you all enjoy that? And we all go, yeah. And they're like, would you like some more? And we go, yeah. And they go, well, give us a couple of months. And then they come back and we're like, we've, we've made this part of the game now. Would you like that for a couple of quid? And we go, yes, please. That's how DLC, C, 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 P, DLC should work. Look, this is what it was. This is how it used to be back in the day. You used to buy a game like Duke Nukem. And then you used to buy these expansion packs, which was more content. It was another part of the map. It wasn't ripped originally from the game and then sold back to you at a cost. So anyway, the point is, Microsoft does have these problems. You've got Rise, you've got Panzer Dragon, you've got Forza, all, all launch games. At the very start of the life of Xbox, they had microtransactions in it. And I never really noticed and I've realised now that all the games have microtransactions. Gears has come out microtransactions. Sea of Thieves has got microtransactions, but it's a kind of a free game, so I might give them a bit of a pass on that one. Halo 5 had microtransactions. They have them in the games. And I was like, you know what? That's quite dirty. The others don't, but Microsoft do. And I was talking to this with Jo. And she came at a different angle, which is also true. She was like, well, the difference is... When you look at PlayStation and you look at Nintendo, their first party AAA games tend to be single player experiences. Microsoft ones tends to be online games or a store with online elements. And I was like, no, that's actually quite true. Everything that you can think of with Microsoft tends to have an online element, even like Rise, this big campaign store, and there was no microtransactions in that. But then you could go online and you could have like boosted time saver packs. Can't quite remember now. It was like 20 years ago. But the point is, they're in there. And I was like, okay, so I can give them a bit of a pass. They're only trying to get some additional money from the online side of things. But now you've got a company that's saying to us that they're going to give us all their games away for free. Free. 10.99. Um, but... But they also know that the Xbox community is quite strong for online gaming. Like, to me, it, it may be different with other people. I know people who play PlayStation and they play Call of Duty online and stuff like that. But for me, Xbox is there for the online and co-op stuff. And PlayStation's there for them. Fucking stellar exclusives. So I'm worried now that this Game Pass is going to get stripped away from all these good games and put into their own streaming services. That's going to leave Xbox with a smaller catalogue and because it takes so long to make a computer game, like Netflix kind of was throwing money at it quite fast and they're in a situation where they can go, I want 50 movies and then 50 directors go out and make 50 movies all at the same time. So within a year to two years, 50 new movies come back in. It's a bit more difficult with gaming because you need a team. Granted, they both need teams, but it's not like my Xbox can go, 50 new gaming teams, please. You can't do that. So they've built them teams up, but they're just not going to be able to pump enough content out, in my opinion, to be able to cover a void that may be coming. But on top of that, I'm also worried that because they're giving them away for free, instead of getting that £40, they're going to be getting that £10, they're going to be like, well, let's crawl some money back in the online elements with some microtransactions. 
So I'm kind of worried that the state of Xbox games may be damaged because of Game Pass, a service I really love. So that's where I'm going to love you and leave you there. There's more things I want to talk about, but I have a limited window because my daughter will be home. Right, she's apparently home. I haven't heard her the stairs yet, so I think she's in the house. The little demon will come up here and cause a ruckus and there's cables and everything lying around. So we're going to wrap that up right now. Um, um, I just want to know what your opinion is. Um, do you think regarding the actual boycotts, people should remember longer? Are you boycotting a particular developer or even a corporation? And if so, why and what's your steps to stop doing that? But also, what do you think about this Game Pass? Like, I love it. I think the service is fantastic. It's reasonably priced. I love the games that are on there at the moment. And it's allowed me to... Um, get through lots of different games that I wouldn't know necessarily buy. I'm like, I'll try that. And then I'm like, ooh, that's good. I really like that. And then I'll go and play more of that similar genre. So I think it's good. But I'm worried that Xbox's games may be tailor-made to make a bit of extra money. Seems they're giving them away free. So that is me, done and dusted. Thank you very much for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, and like I said, I will try. I would... Uncle Junker is going to do his best to try and do it once a week. But just hold me to two weeks. If I haven't done one in two weeks, get on Twitter and fucking boycott, mate. That's what you need to do. And by boycott, it, mate, I mean complain and forget about it. And two minutes later, then come straight back and give me more money. So that's me done. I am off. Whoosh. Jesus Christ. <laughs>